Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. I am Nadia Struijwig and I'm an artist from the Netherlands. Today I will dive into the Push 3 and I will share one of my live set projects with you and I want to show you a few workflow options. But also I want to show you how you can use the Push 3 to capture samples from any device you have. In this case, it will be the Korg Electribe, one of my favorites. So I hope you enjoy and stay tuned. Alrighty, so this is the Push 3 and compared to the Push 2, it is slightly different. And for me, the most beneficial part is that it is a standalone. I do really love to work with the gear and therefore this is reminding me of how nice and intuitive it works. So there are a few differences of, uh, compared to the Push 2, which I'm going to explain. And the first part I would say for me, which is the most important, is that I have Line In. So with the Line In, I can connect any device to the Push 3. So now I receive basically signal from the Cork Electribe into the Push. And then here I have a stereo out that goes to my mini mixer. You can see there is no USB-C or USB uh, connected to my computer, which makes it really nice for me. <laughs> and here you can see there is a MIDI connection. Actually it goes via TRS and I have connected it to my Electribe because I want that the Electribe is syncing with my Push 3. So this will be my master. As you probably know from the Push 2, there are a, like tons of functions in here that basically works the same if you go onto your computer and work in Ableton. But the nicest thing is with the Push 3 is that I have an option to have the session view. I have no device yet selected, but here you can actually see all the clips you have, for example. So the cool part is, is that you can transfer any project of yours onto the Push 3. And there are a few things that you need to know by doing that first. So you go into the settings, which is in the left top. And here you can actually find how much available uh, gigabytes there are. Um, you can also see if the battery is charged, yes or no. I now have it on charge, but I think it is up to two and a half hours that you can use it. I can change some LED brightness in here as well and the display light. So right now, because it's daylight, I love to just crank it up. So also the expression, the nice thing of the Push 3 is, is that we actually have MPE control and uh, we can create a really cool uh, dynamic sound with that. So the sensitivity as well, even like the audio, which I'm gonna explain a little bit later, because of course we want to work with the Cork Electribe and capture all these samples for my live set. Um, and here we can find the buffer size and um, yeah, the volume of the incoming signal. So let's already put this on 512 buffer size. So the MIDI function is actually really nice. As I told you before, you can use it as the master and it sends over a signal to any of my gear. So in this case, uh, we're gonna put it into output because we want to send actually the signal over to the Electribe. So we have that set already as well. Then pedals and CV. So as you see a little bit there, I work also with some modules and you can now have CV out so you can put so you can send over a signal to my modules which is nice um, i think it's a really good and nice feature of this but we want to actually connect this to ableton because we want to transfer projects right that's what we are here for in the settings so you connect to your wi-fi onto your push but it should be the same as the Wi-Fi that you use on your computer or on your phone or whatever. So once you've done that, you just connect and your push is connected. And let's do that. So I'm doing that now. And what we do then is we go over to software and here you can find actually your serial number, your user account, but we need to authorize my push first. So I'm gonna authorize this. And then this pops up on your screen. And you have to put and fill in this link into your um, browser, and then you can authorize it with 
yeah, with, um, with your Ableton account. So once you've done that, you can press done and probably you need to fill in a number so it's getting linked, done, and then it is connected. So I think it's time now to move over to my computer and show you how I connect Ableton on my computer with the Push 3 and transfer different projects to it. So this is the project I'm working on. As you see, there is still a lot to do, but at least there's already a progression uh, in how I want to create this build up. So now you can see all my clips in here and uh, you can see also some hardware I'm using. So it's the Kickane, OxyCoral, the Machine Plus. And then I have a base, synth and extra. And with the push, I can actually enable these all. Because I work with so much hardware, I also want to have some other elements to be recorded. So that's what I'm gonna do with the push three. But first we need to get the push and get this project upload it to the push. So as you can see on the left side, this is my library and underneath places you can find the push, which is connected to my Wi-Fi right now. So there's a user library and it's going now into sending in the code. So which I'm gonna do, which is 6936814. Uh, now it's connected. And now I can actually see the clips I'm using or the groups I upload, the presets I created. So you can really create something unique and you can use this then in Ableton here as well. So it's, it works really nice. So underneath project, you can find all my projects. I can delete them, I can upload them anywhere. So what I want to do now is actually this project, I want to upload into my push and it's really easy done because you can just drag and drop basically. So now we are copying the files to my push, which is really easy. It takes a little bit, so let's wait for this. So this is done and you can see my live set is actually below projects, but I'm very curious if this is also now in my push three. So you can see already a few of my sets in there. And I want to activate my Mutech project, which I'm gonna do. As I'm still working on it, there's still so much fun to discover here. So as you can see, these are all similar like the project I showed you on my computer in Ableton. And I can just press on them. And now I'm actually here in the first mode and I can see all the different effects I'm using on each channel. And these parameters I can change up as well. I will show you that later. Then I can see all the volumes, so all my dB, which is really nice because I love to fade in different sounds. And here we go into each sample details. So I can change up the loop position, loop length. Then here in the top, we can see the whole view of the clips I created. And going into the layout and pressing on this one, we actually can see now all the pads that are lit up, we can enable them or disable them. So right now, let's see how we can change up things. And just we're gonna check if the volume is right. So the main output is now zero dB which should be right. And I connected it to the Teenage Engineering Mixer, so I'm recording there. And yeah, let's press something on and see if it works. So yeah. It works. <laughs> so now you can see the loop is just playing and what I just said before, we can dive into the different loops we can create. So I can also change my loop position. So it's also really nice. These buttons are actually very sensitive, touch sensitive. So let's go back to there. But yeah, we can just also change the loop length here. We can uh, change the offset marker. You can even like change the gain. So you can imagine capturing my own sounds in here is pretty easy because I can edit it on the fly, right? So 
I'm gonna undo actually. So I'm gonna revert to my last action. Which is also really nice, so you can always go back. So the second clip, if I'm clicking on it, it has a high-pitched tone which I want to play, but there are still no effects really on it, right? So I'm going to reverb, and I'm going to increase the dry red. But I'm also going back to the EQ8, because I want to go to band number 4 and maybe filter it down a little. So I use it as a sort of filter. So you can imagine, like, using it like this, you can easily fade in and fade out different um, uh, different sounds. So maybe I want to add the bass. So here it says bass. I can also watch here, click bass. Now there's a bass. So let's go to the full sample, which I'm gonna click now, of the first sound. And you can see here, right, the kicking, the oxycoral, the machine plus. And as I said before, I'm mostly using these as line ins or um, yeah, I'm just working with gear on the fly and mix and match them. But I always want to capture a few samples of them. So if we go, gonna go now to, just gonna press this off for a bit. Going to oxycoral and press it on. This is basically the sound that I created out of the, my modular. And if we go into the details, you can see there's a loop I created, just to see how it sounds. But we can lengthen this loop, of course. It also works great for a backup, to be honest. So yeah, this is already a second sound, but we can go also in here and say like, hey, we want to have... Um, audio effects. Also an auto filter on it. Because I want to maybe filter it in. So now we have the bass. I want to use the kick cane as well, which is also a module that I recorded before. And then later on this synth com comes in, but I want to fade it in actually. So I'm going to put it down. So this is a little bit how I would do a transition. And you can see it's quite free-flowing because the samples are um, sort of separate. But I work with a lot of external gear, so that makes a difference. So now we're going to go to Synth. I'm going to dive into this. Um, and maybe you want to pan it as well. This is from my machine, and this one I will play live. So it's also like a lot of different elements. So it is possible to add new elements. And with this set, I might wanna add some of melodic pads or something or create something unique with an Ableton instrument. I'm gonna add a new MIDI track and I want to have a new sound so let's go to a pad. I saw a really nice pad the other day I think it was this one. So I'm adding a new instrument here so we can record anything in this way so if this is lit up it means like I'm in a recording mode. If I press it off it's not recording. So here we can record anything. And to record your first loop, we can press long and fix length. And we can say like, okay, I want the recording to be two bars. So everything will be then recorded in two bars. And quantized as well. I want that everything is quantized because I'm not really uh, the best in that. So right now, awakening, pad, we want to play it. So I'm going into this section of the layout. So we can go into here and change the layout, pressing by layout. So you see different options to play now. Also on the side, you have scale. So I want to play actually a minor 
also what I said, I'm not, I'm not the best in, <laughs> in uh, knowing different um, chords or whatever. So I always love to yeah, choose minor. So clicking on that and that's all good. So now we can play here. And the coolest thing of this is actually these pads are, are expressive, right? So we can... We're shaking the whole table. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool. But actually I want to go back to the sequencer, but also play live. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press some of the steps. Just as a bass tone, sort of. And now I can go octave higher, so you can see here where you're gonna play, and I can still... So I'm gonna record this now. So we can create actually different variations of this. And going into this section, we can still change the different, uh, the different MIDI notes. So now I'm going into a next channel and I want to create actually a new MIDI track. And now I want to use the drums. So let's go into a 909 core kit. So here you can see it's opening a sort of different layout as well. So what we can do now, we can sort of drum along. And we can click on repeat. Maybe add an effect on it. So I'm gonna add the bars. Gonna audio effects. Maybe a little delay. Maybe filter. I'm gonna go back again, device, auto filter. Maybe we want to have also some reverb. Sometimes what I do, I just copy this thing. So this is how it sounds, and we can just duplicate it. So, so now I duplicated this new scene. So this was actually a little example on how to create new MIDI tracks, but also then how to use different instruments or the drum rack and create a little beat for yourself. It's so easy and it's so inspiring. And the nicest thing is everything is sort of quantized, you know? So yeah, that's amazing. Um, I want to start a new project right now because I want to show you finally how I work with the Cork Electribe and capturing sounds from it. And then how I can later use it into this live project, for example. 
So right now I'm going into the left top and with this I can create a new set which I'm going to do. So let's click new set. Um, we're not going to save this. So there's a new set created. So the default template always starts with two MIDI channels and two audio channels. And you can create your own template, of course, which is nice. Uh, in this case, we're going to delete MIDI channels and we're just going to start off with this audio. So I think what will be nice is to see if we can get first um, sound from the Cork Electribe and then we can jam along basically. So I am going to shuffle things up. Alrighty, so this is the best of both worlds. I have my analog gear, I do have my DAW, push three in this case, and I want to sync them up. So basically what you only need to do, what I said before, connect it to with a MIDI cable and make sure that the push is sending a signal out to the Electribe. So now let's press play and see if the lights are blinking on my Electribe. Amazing. So you can see the lights are blinking, meaning everything is sort of in sync. However, we do need to steal that line in, right? So now you can see my master volume is down and you can go into audio here and I'm going to crank it up and let's see if it does immediately it. So it does work. I have line in. So you might hear nothing right now, but if I go into this section, you do. So if I press play here again, it stops there automatically as well. So this layout actually means I can record this right now, but we can also just go into our a clip view and then what I can do is I can press this a bit longer and then this appears. So it means I can record things. So I can quantize everything, which I always do uh, 116. I can do a fixed length of one bar in this case. I'm clicking one bar and yeah, let's just record some things. The only thing I want to say is the Electribe has only a stereo output, so I need to mute every time uh, elements. So I'm going to do that right now. Uh, and also, we want to see if this is the right tempo. We can adjust it with this button. And I think it is quite more up tempo, so maybe 130. So let's see how this works. So that works. So loud and clear. And we can adjust the main output here. And also if we click on this, we can also have a Q output and a headphones output. So now the kick is playing. So let's record this. You can see it's recorded now and it's doubling up as well. When it's done, I just can click on this. And now it is played. So now if I press this off, you can hear it works. Cool. So I actually want to have, you can duplicate tracks by holding duplication. So, and then I'm gonna delete this. I want to have another sound now. So let's enable Just pressing record off again, because it doesn't need to be that long. So, next sound. So, deleting this again. Because now I can create all these different parts, all these different elements. And it's super intuitive. Like, how insane is this? Delete this one. So now it's recorded, so we can change this loop now. Pressing this off. Let's go into the loop now. So here we can find the whole loop and we can amend it. So maybe I'm going to create, so the loop is here. Loop length is one. 
Maybe I just want to have this part. Maybe I want to transpose it. And I'm gonna add some audio effect on this. And that makes it nice as well, right? So I can just combine hardware and software. So we're gonna add an extra sound now, but just from Ableton itself. So I'm going to plus, then I'm going to MIDI track. And let's go into the drums. Let's create a little drum thingy. So you can change elements if you go into the sample itself. So I click now the kick. What I can do is actually I can make the gain a bit softer. So this one I want to be a bit louder. This one too. Right now you see me creating a full track and you can maybe imagine how it is to build this whole live set from scratch from top to bottom. This is how I always like to work. Okay, this is really addictive. I really love the Push 3 and not only because it is standalone, but also because I can capture my gear so easily and integrate it in any live set I have. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I see you next time.